in a world. George, can you help me set up my recording studio? Absolutely. Where voiceover talent are stuck in their closets. Is there a way to improve the quality of my audio files? Oh yeah. And they need to deliver finished audio tracks. You are my hero. Yeah, oh, thank you. That's sweet. There is one man who takes it all on. Uh, Video time, excellent. Yeah. Widom's World. Widom's World, rated VO. Hello, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Let me get right into it this week. Kim sent in a great question. Uh, it's more about audio processing, specifically EQ and high and low pass filters. She writes. I've gone back to see if you've mentioned this already, and you did briefly, but could you speak more on the subject of high-pass and low-pass filters? Uh, also, what is meant by the term rolling off, as in rolling off on the lower frequencies? Does this just mean eliminating them? So let's get into it. She talks about WaveLab as her DAW of choice, recording software that is, and it used to be mine as well. I loved WaveLab when I was on Windows. Now I'm on Twisted Wave because I'm on a Mac. It's the closest equivalent I've found to WaveLab that I really love on the Mac side. So I'm going to demonstrate some of the stuff uh, on Twisted Wave. So let's give that a go. I would like to use Twisted Wave instead as it seems more streamlined and targeted for VO. As I don't have a Mac, I was considering the Twisted Wave online product, which is still in beta. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? So let's get into it. So let me show you what high pass filtering means in terms of audio processing. So let's go into effects here and we'll go down to effects, audio units and VST. So you can recreate what's called a high pass filter using a regular graphic EQ and some softwares will have specific filters called a high pass or a low pass filter. So let me show you graphically using a graphic EQ first, which may be the most easy to translate to other softwares, something that you can more easily understand. So let's start out with a default setting. And then let's go ahead and start creating what is called a high pass filter, also known as a low cut filter. That's just removing low frequencies from the audio that don't need to be there thereby helping to eliminate things like rumble, like rumbling trucks going by, hum from ventilation systems are a real common issue, and using a high-pass filter or low-cut filter will remove them. However, they won't remove airplanes, which today there seems to be somebody who's having a great time circling the neighborhood in his little airplane, so uh, we're just going to have to let that fly today. Get it? Fly? As in rolling off the lower frequencies, does this just mean eliminating them? Yes, it basically means that. So if I was to uh, start by removing the lowest of the low end frequencies with us with these controls, I'll start at 20 hertz and I'll move up. Okay. Now I'm gonna. This is I always start by taking everything from 63 out completely for just about everybody. But let's see what happens if I take out too much of the low end. So let's play this back. So what I'll do here is I've highlighted a section of the audio. I'm going to allow it to play and loop back. So it's just going to keep looping over and over. And while that's happening, I'm going to play with the low end EQ and see if we can find a setting where it doesn't remove any tonal characteristics that I want in my voice, but I'm still removing the low end from the audio that could create, uh, add or at least leave rumble in the recording. So let's go ahead and play this back and take a listen. I would like to use Twisted Wave instead, as it seems more streamlined and targeted for VO. As I don't have a Mac, I was considering the Twisted Wave online product, which is still in beta. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? I would like to use Twisted Wave instead, as it seems more streamlined and targeted for VO. As I don't have a Mac, I was considering the Twisted Wave online product, which is still in beta. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? So I found a frequency setting where it's taking out everything from, you know, taking out 20 dB of everything below 63 hertz. And then I found that there's a little component in my voice that resonates way down almost to 63. Well, it's probably falling somewhere between 63 and 80. And I don't want to lose that completely, so I'm just ducking 63 out to about 6, uh, by about minus 6 dB. And then I'm leaving 80 hertz there because I don't want to take away too much of the fullness of my voice. 
So that's going to be a setting that works well for me uh, with a male voice, mid, you know, baritone-ish kind of tone uh, male voice. If you have a female voice and you don't have any baritone in your voice, which most women don't, you can probably set this high pass filter to a much higher setting. You can probably take away all of 63 and even some of 80. Now, do you need to do this all the time? No, you don't. But as a matter of course, as a rule of thumb, I do pretty much always have at least some modicum of a high pass filter because there's almost no home studio recording environment that can't be helped with a high pass filter setting like this. There's almost always something in somebody's home studio that's adding junk to the waveform or noise that you want to remove. Now, um, let me show you one other effect in Twisted Wave that also will work for, as a high pass filter. And it's actually called high pass. And this is a very, very simple version of an equalizer. Instead of having a whole bunch of sliders, you just have one control. That's the high pass filter frequency setting. And that's it. And you can control that by sliding it back and forth and figure out what frequency you like. And again, you have to use your ear when doing this, right? You, you, it's not a visual thing. You have to use your ear to figure out where that frequency should be. The interesting thing about this high pass filter, there's also a resonance control. So not only can you roll off the bottom, but you can find a point that you like in the frequency range that you find to be a nice tasteful, uh, you know, boost of the, say, the resonance of your voice without maybe over exaggerating. So let's see what that sounds like. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? I would like to use Twisted Wave instead, as it seems more streamlined and targeted for VO. As I don't have a Mac, I was considering the Twisted Wave online product, which is still in beta. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? So with my voice, it seems like a boost of around 100 hertz of about 5 dB or so is actually kind of tasteful. It adds a little bit more richness, but then from that point on, it slopes off and removes the bottom end. So when we say it rolls off, that's what we mean. It's sloping or rolling off at the bottom end, or, you know, that's, that's what that rolling off means. A low pass or high cut filter. What is, how is that different? So let's go into effects and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go to, it's not something I use almost ever. It's very rare that I ever would need to use one, but just think of it as the opposite. So with a low pass filter, you're choosing a frequency point at which everything above it will not be passed. So let's hear what that sounds like. I'll start with it bypassed. Instead, as it seems more streamlined and targeted for VO. As I don't have a Mac, I was considering the Twisted Wave I'll online turn it on. product, which is still in beta. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? I would like to use Twisted Wave instead, as it seems more streamlined and targeted for VO. As I don't have a Mac, I was considering the Twisted Wave online product, which is still in beta. Do you have any opinion on Twisted Wave online? I would like to use Twisted Wave. In I don't use it that often because it's rare that I want to remove everything at the top end. I usually want to preserve my high end frequency range because it sounds very nice and sparkly and bright. But if your microphone is really edgy or noisy or sibilant, you may sometimes find that uh, rolling off the top end using a low pass filter like this could be useful to you. And so it depends. Again, you got to use your ear. Some of you may have a microphone that has this feature built in. And if some of you have more advanced equipment, you may have a mic preamp or processor that has this feature built in. It may just be a switch on off switch, or it could be a switch on your microphone. This Audio Technica AT3035 actually has a low cut switch right on the back. That is the same as a high pass filter. And so you can engage that low cut switch, turn it on, and you may find that it actually clarifies the audio, removing that rumble. I find in almost every case that is useful. I, on the Audio Technica, the low cut switch seems to be really well designed and seems to do a great job. And I pretty much always turn it on. But on other microphones, that switch may not work quite as well. Maybe it starts rolling off at too high a frequency. So your mileage may vary. Every mic is different. And again, you have to refer to your ears to figure out what works best. Well, if you don't know what works best for you, don't go it alone. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So uh, you're welcome to find me over at vostudiotech.com. I have a sound check section there where you can send audio in. And you can let me hear it and I can give you my 
my two cents about what I think it sounds like and what you should do. And I also have uh, the ability to create these EQ settings for you so that you don't have to worry about the exact settings and allow you to keep on working. It's called Virtual Engineering Twisted Wave Stacks and I also have audio processing templating for just about every other recording software imaginable available to you there. Thanks for sending in your question, Kim. And if you have a question, you can send it into Widom's World at edgestudio.com. And I'll hopefully get to it in the coming weeks, if not you know sooner. And I pick the questions that I think will benefit the most people the quickest. So if you're wondering if your question's floating down the list, why I haven't answered it, maybe it's a little bit too specific. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And tune in next week for my next edition of Widom's World. And don't forget to subscribe.